I've been using Isotope's plug-in product since RX4 came out, and I got somewhat stuck on RX6. It did everything I needed it to do. Um, and then I heard the reverb unit was much improved, so I decided I was going to upgrade to RX11. And when I went to their site, it's always a little difficult to do price comparisons because uh, they often have sales. But anyway, they had a bundle for RX Suite 10. Uh, I think it was Element Suite 10. And it was a whopping negative $3 to add in all these other modules. So I thought, why not? <laughs> uh, it was a little tough to tell exactly what I was going to get in those modules. Um, and therefore, I wanted to do this video, show you what you get and how it works. Uh, it's not going to be a, a full tutorial. It's going to be a little bit long because there's a lot to this, uh, to this particular bundle. So let's get started. RX is intended for audio repair, restoration, and enhancement. It is the only module that includes both the assistant version of the plugin and some individual plugins. You do get individual plugins for voice denoise, dereverb, declick, dehum, and declip. The assistant provides a simplified interface to all those plugins, and it adds a tone control and a de-esser for vocals. And in the music mode, it swaps out dereverb and declick for de-squeak and de-pick. The de-esser gets swapped for de-harsh. Neutron is a mixing assistant. It has some settings geared to dialogue under the voice presets. You have dialogue and vocals. A little later, I'll walk through the Assistant. The Assistant is the only interface you get from Neutron. The detailed area here and in the other modules just contains an ad for the full product. Nectar is a vocal assistant and, like Neutron, has some settings geared to speaking as well as singing. It does provide pitch correction and the ability to make different sounding voices from your original signal. Some of this could be useful if you wanted to try some special effects on narration. Ozone is a mastering tool and seems like the tool most oriented for music production. In voiceover, you could make use of the loudness module to set the overall volume of your output track. It even has a setting specifically for streaming. Let's start with Neutron for our more detailed looks. It shares an irritation with Nectar and Ozone. When you first add it to a track, you have to allow it to do its learning phase. This can't be skipped. This is fine when you're new to the product, but once you know what settings you want, it gets in the way. Luckily, in Reaper, if you save a track template after you've run the learn phase, when you add a track to a new project via the template, it shows up with the controls enabled. To use it the first time, hit the Go button, and it waits for you to play some audio. I've had a couple of hiccups in this area where it didn't seem to recognize that the track was playing. It, I would remove and re-add it, and it would work on the second attempt when this happened. When it works, it provides some nice visual feedback to show you its processing. Once it tells you it's preparing a custom setting, you can hit stop as it uses a lot of CPU and your audio can break up during playback. When it's done, the interface appears. You can see it identified the track as voice, but it seems to think it's vocals rather than dialogue. In vocals, all the modules, including saturation, are enabled. When I switch to dialogue, the saturation module turns off and the tonal target meter curve changes, but none of the other intent controls change. The default settings did make an improvement. There is a frequency in my voice that to my ear sounds a bit muddy, and I usually use a custom EQ curve to clean that up. Neutron wasn't as good as my custom curve, but I was pleasantly surprised that it targeted the same area. I'll go through the top menu for this module, but I'm going to skip it in the others unless the functionality changes. We are in the Assistant tab. I'm going to call the next tab the Marketing tab, although I think they call it the Detail tab. I, I assume when you buy the more advanced versions, there are more detailed controls here. We then have a Bypass button, and if we aren't happy with the sample we trained the tool on, we can use the Relearn button. In all the modules, you'll see small buttons with a vertical line. Clicking on these toggles on and off that specific module. When the module is off, the intent controls for that module are disabled. So if a control isn't responding, make sure you have it turned on. The area to the left is the target library. The plus symbol up at the top lets you load an audio file, and Neutron will treat that as the target reference. To the right is our EQ section. You can increase or decrease the amount of processing with the equalizer control. The sculptor controls the amount of tone shaping that is used to match the ideal curve. 
The orange curve shown is the EQ target the software decided on in the learn phase, and you can change it by relearning or using the target area controls, but I can't see any way to directly modify it. When you play back audio, your waveform shows up dynamically in white. Further down is the dynamic section. The density control applies an upward compressor, meaning it takes items that fall below some threshold value and increase their volume. From the manual, I'm assuming the density knob controls how much it is pushed up, and in this version of the effect, you can't adjust the threshold. The manual states that the compress intent knob adjusts the blend of compression. I have no idea what that means. At a minimum, most compressors let you control a threshold and makeup gain, and many let you control and shape the aggression of the compression. Here you just get blend. My suspicion is that under the hood, it modifies things like knee, attack, release, threshold, and makeup gain automatically. The saturation area strikes me as more suitable for music than voiceover, although you can mimic staticky radio effects. As a guitar player, I tend to add whatever saturation I want via pedals, the amp, or rack effects. But with this feature, you can add saturation to any acoustic instrument, including drums. You get a drive control knob to adjust the amount of saturation. There are two buttons to the right that switch between what they call subtle and dramatic. And in the manual, they also use the terms classic and trash. But I think of it as drive and distortion. To the right of that, you have an XY pad that lets you further customize the type of saturation you produce. Finally, at the far right is a tone slider that targets higher frequencies as you move up and lower frequencies as you move down. The far right has a width control, which lets you widen or narrow stereo signals. Even with a mono voice track, this can produce an effect. I, I found it a likable effect, but I don't think I'll use it. I, I think it can be distracting for listeners using headphones. Let's go through the learning phase for Nectar so we can see its controls. In the center is a dropdown where the learning phase categorizes what it hears as singing, rap, or speaking. It decided my narration was rap vocals. I must have more rhythm in my narration than I thought. I can click on the speech bubble to switch to dialogue and I get four settings I can choose among. To see the changing waveform, you need to close the dialogue each time. I'll just use screenshots so you can see all four at once. Again, you can use the plus icon and add custom targets. The little keyboard icon allows you to detect the key and click on the appropriate suggestion or use the drop down and select one. If you set a key, the voice feature enables more options. The shape and control adjusts the frequency gain on an equalizer. The intensity intent knob controls a compressor and the manual says that turning the knob changes the threshold ratio, attack and release. It sounds to me like it also compensates the makeup gain. The XY pad controls a reverb, delay, and dimension. The Y direction is pretty straightforward and controls the ratio of wet and dry signal. The X direction is downright confusing. It controls multiple settings for each effect and you don't have individual control. So if you have all three effects on, you get a predetermined setting for all three effects based on the X position. In general, the further you move to the right, the more intense the effect. To add to the confusion, Dimension doesn't mean anything to me, but the manual leads me to believe it's either a chorus, flanger, or phaser, perhaps all three, depending on the X position. The overall philosophy is simplicity, so you drag your finger and if you find a sound you like, stop. The approach isn't bad if you had the full module, you could find a setting you like for each effect and go to the detailed view to capture that, then move on to the next control. In the elements version, you might get lucky and like all three, or you might only use one or two of the possible effects here. The width control says width amount in the manual. It appears to do a similar thing as width in Neutron, although to my ear, I like Neutron a bit better. One thing I did learn was that these modules don't seem to be transparent when you turn everything off individually, but you don't bypass the unit. With everything off, I can hear a difference when I hit bypass. This is more noticeable in Nectar than in Neutron. This makes it hard to compare a single thing like width between the two modules. To the right is a fun area for this plugin. It's two effects, one named Voices and one named Backer. It has a pronounced effect on spoken vocals. I suspect the names of the effects are more aligned to singing. The Backer setting gives you a variety of personalities. For voiceover, it's not going to turn you into Luke Daniels, but for special effects, it might be useful. 
I did watch a video from Isotope on the full version of Nectar where they produce a full chorus of singing voices using this effect from a single original vocal melody. Let's move on to RX-11. The Repair Assistant can provide a quick fix and paired with Learn Mode can maybe give you a good starting point. The Learn feature seems a bit hit or miss to me. Sometimes it gets really aggressive with the D-Reverb and other times on the same recording it doesn't turn it on at all. The recording won't have any clipping, but sometimes I'll see de-clipping get enabled, and once it even set the threshold down to negative 16 dB, which frankly sounded horrible. There was likely something in the recording that triggered that, but I don't have enough experience yet to understand what it's doing. Just be willing to manually tweak a few knobs so you can dial in some improvements if you record it in a less than ideal environment. If I didn't have a separate de-esser, I think I would use the entire Reaper Assistant only for de-essing when needed because the individual modules give a lot more control. By far, the voice denoise module is my favorite and by itself is worth the asking price. I work in a pretty quiet room, but the refrigerator compressor one room over can turn on and attentive listeners could hear it. The HVAC system can start, a plane might fly overhead outside, and even though I have soundproof windows, I can still hear it. The voice denoiser is excellent at detecting these ambient changes and adjusting what it does on the fly to completely remove any distractions from my audio. It, it has its limits. If the HVAC turns on high or the neighbor fires up a leaf blower, I'm going to have to record another time. But most other outside noises can be reduced to acceptable levels. Every YouTube video I've made in the last year plus has used this module, although it was the older RX6 version. I tend to use it in adaptive mode, optimized for dialogue and with the gentle filter type. Even in adaptive mode, the noise threshold slider seems to affect the performance. I typically have it somewhere between 0 and 3 dB. My default value for reduction is 17 dB. I leave the input and out sliders alone as I do makeup gain in other parts of my processing chain. It is very fast and efficient and I have it on during editing so I am always listening to the denoised signal. I have the voice denoiser second in my signal chain right after the D-Reverb module. Speaking of the D-Reverb module, I follow the manual recommendation and record with a few seconds of silence and use the learn mode. The learn feature only seems to set up the profile area. I generally find the tail length is set too long, so I drastically lower that. I slide the reduction knob up and down too high and there are some odd sounding artifacts, so I go below that. I leave on the enhanced dry signal and leave the artifact smoothing at a high level because who doesn't want smooth artifacts? I hear very little difference with this control, but I suspect that's because I'm getting very little in the way of those squonky musical artifacts that FFT processing can introduce. On to de-click. Some days I seem to have more mouth noises than others. When I turn it on, I use the low latency setting with the shown values but this is going to be a very personal module to experiment with, and it is also one of the more processor-intensive modules. I don't use the de-hum module. The learn mode seems overly aggressive, considering I don't hear any electrical hum in my recordings. The adaptive mode might be the way to go if you have hum, but it's very CPU-intensive, so you might get it set up and then leave it off until you are ready to render. So in summation, for negative $3, I can't complain about the additional modules. I was surprised at how little control I got in them. I was expecting them to be more like the RX module, where I got a limited number of them, but the finer individual control. Not sure I would be happy if I paid even an extra $30 to get those additional modules. I've only had this suite for a short while, and it has already misbehaved several times. A couple of times it caused Reaper to crash, and another it caused it to just hang. A uh, third time, audio just got weird. It sounded like I was only hearing the parts that various modules had removed. However, turning off all the modules and even turning off the entire FX chain would not give me back my original audio. I had to quit and restart Reaper to restore normal behavior. I never had these issues with RX-6, but I have been adding and experimenting with more modules than I do in my normal workflow. I also can't say if it's a Reaper issue or an Isotope issue, but otherwise I have no problems with Reaper. As I mentioned, the crown jewel for me has always been the noise reduction module, and it doesn't sound that different to me from the RX-6 version, so I don't think it's worth the upgrade just for that. The D-Reverb, however, does sound a lot better, and I'm happy with the new version of that. 
All the modules in RX11 do play nicer with Reaper and can stay docked in the FX panel, whereas in RX6, they always had to float across my multiple monitors. I find reducing the clutter of floating windows a nice improvement. Luckily, I still have access to all my modules from RX6 standard, so I will continue to use my RX6 ds -er where I have more fine grain control. I don't think I'll be using the RX Repair Assistant at all. It was interesting to experiment with, but I'm willing to put in the effort of fine-tuning the individual modules. If you want a simpler experience, I can see how the Assistant might be appealing. I hope that helps and keeps you from having any unpleasant surprises if you purchase the Elements 10 bundle. Thanks for watching. Edit your audio in peace.